Hello, my name is Soros Stachnes and I'm teaching the photogrammetry course uh, here at the University of Bonn. And given that this is this year a very special situation, um, given the COVID-19 situation, we have to go for completely remote teaching. And um, so this is the your course for photogrammetry one done in a remote fashion. Um, so the lectures in this course will be done completely via video lectures and online courses um, to avoid any physical contact. But that's something which I'm actually doing since years that I'm recording my videos, my lectures um, and give you the possibility to assess the material at home. So um, in this course this year there it will consist of a mixture of newly recorded videos like this one over here and um, lecture recordings that I did in 2015 and 2016 um, from the Photogrammetry 1 course at that time. So the majority of material is similar or identical, um, maybe slight adaptations there, here and there, um, and some of the videos will be newly recorded, but the majority of material will stem from the 2015-2016 course. Um, so the lectures will be done as um, video recordings, so you can access them at any point in time. Uh, in addition to that, for the students from Freiburg, uh, from Bonn, I'm sorry, um, there will be questions and tutorials um, using some teleconference Zoom system, for example, Zoom, so that you can uh, discuss directly with me or with one of the tutors, um, and we are there to answer your question to support you as good as we can in this situation. Um, a few words about the video recordings, they will be uploaded on YouTube and they are also the 2015-2016 recordings completely online. Um, again, the course material will slightly change, but the majority of the material um, will be identical to 2016. So um, you can access the course at any point in time. They are the nearly complete video recordings online, so that um, with the a few recordings I'll do here, uh, we can extend that course. Um, the lecture of this course is in English. Um, the same holds for the tutorials. Um, your uh, English is a language of science and you need to get exposed to that as early as possible. All the literature that you will experience will be in English. Um, so it's a good point in time to start now. Um, the slides are self-contained slides. So typically all the information that I provide in the course are given on the slides, so I don't prepare uh, an additional script or something like that. Uh, there's a pretty good book by Wolfgang Furstner, uh, which is not necessarily a very easy read, but a very good reference uh, material, the Photogrammetric Computer Vision book, um, if you want to dive into more into the details. Um, and if the slides and all the material will be provided through eCampus and also through our publicly accessible website. The exam will be in German and in English, so you can write in English your answers or in German. Questions will be provided in both languages, so um, you are free to choose the language you like most for the exam. Um, who's going to do the course here? This will be a team of three people. This will be myself. Um, I will be teaching the class, and then there will be Jan Weiler and Louis Wiesmann, two of the PhD students from my lab, who will take care about the homework assignments um, and the tutorials um, and will be there for questions to support you as good as we can. Before I want to go into the details on what we are um, going to experience in the course, I want to briefly talk about my expectations. So you for sure have expectations about the course, but I also do have expectations and I want to um, communicate them as uh, clearly as possible. So the first thing I want to do is actually stimulate your interest in photogrammetry, computer vision, robotics applications. So um, where we have sensors, typically cameras, but maybe also uh, laser rangefinder, but we mainly work with cameras in this course, and we use the images to perceive our world. And then we want to derive information from this sensor data. This can be um, geometric information like uh, what's the size of an object, what is there. It can also be semantic information, so um, giving meaning to objects that something we see is a building or a car or a person. Um, this is what we call semantic information. And I want to stimulate your interest in those um, challenging but interesting state estimation problems um, that we are going to address in this course. And this is a basic basis for a lot of applications for building autonomous systems for um, performing measurements in an autonomous fashion, um, building vehicles which can navigate uh, autonomously through the environment. And my goal is that you understand the key concepts. concepts. So first th and the important things, you need to understand what those algorithms are doing, what they are used for, um, what the limitations are, to get a good idea what you can do with those techniques. A 
the same point in time, it's important for me that you also are able to realize basis, basic system. That means you should be able to implement those algorithms on your own. Not necessarily in the most sophisticated way, and in the way they are done in state-of-the-art systems today, but at least the basic algorithms you should be able to implement yourself. And the result of this implementing things plays an important role here. And it's from my point of view also one of the key things where you see that you have understood something. So there are actually two concepts when you see that you have understood a concept. The first thing is if you're actually able to build it on your own from scratch, so implementing a system. And the second thing is if you can teach it to someone else. So these are two very good indicators that you have actually understood the material here. Um, as a result of this, a lot of the homework assignments will be programming exercises. Um, so you will need to program simple solutions or solutions of the concept that we are presenting here. Um, and this will be done in Python. Uh, I will come to that in a second later. Um, in addition to this, I encourage you to ask questions. This is this year slightly more tricky um, as you can't interrupt me right now and ask questions. But we have special questioning sessions where you can ask us questions, um, ask the tutors in the tutorials. They are there to help you. And it's an offer to you. They're not mandatory, um, but you can go there. You can dial in um, this year and you can have the, you can ask them questions and they are there to support you. Um, also, if you struggle with something, please give us feedback early. The earlier I know that something is not working well, the easier I can react to that. If I get feedback at the end of the course saying this or that was stupid or didn't really work well for us or was too much, there's nothing I can change about it anymore. So please let me know early. Send me an email say, Vera, I'm very unhappy about this and that situation. And I will read all those emails, I will think about all of them, it doesn't mean that I change everything or change the way I do my teaching, uh, but at least I will take it into account and see what I can do in order to simplify your life. Um, the last and but probably most important thing is no plagiarism. So what I really dislike is if people copy their homework exam, homework um, solutions and assignments. So the thing is the homework assignments are there to allow, to foster your understanding and make it for you easier to understand the material and realize systems on your own. Um, yes, you need to have a minimum amount of points to be admitted to the exam, but that's something that everyone manages who tries. So it's not a very hard um, boundary to cross this 50% of the points uh, in the homework assignment. So please do it on your own. Don't copy your results. Um, this is something that I'm not going to ex um, accept and where I am have the tendency to take rather stronger measures um, because it is like cheating and or you're cheating actually um, with us and that's something I don't really like. So please do your homework assignments on your own. Um, so the course we're talking here about is Photogrammetry 1 and Photogrammetry 2 course which uh, is the module B36 uh, Photogrammetry and um, in the summer term now it consists of three hours of lecturing per week and two hours of tutorials, so five hours and some, and the winter term it's two hours of teaching and one hour of tutorials plus one hour for um, preparing for the, or two hours for preparing for the, um, for the exam. So uh, it has an overall workload of 10 credit points, so this sums up to 300 hours of work. So every credit point doesn't only hold for this course, but holds for all courses that we have. Uh, one credit point corresponds to 30 hours of work on average. So in sum, the whole course should take you something like 300 hours. And I want to use this 300 hours to make a small calculation on being a bit more precise what my expectations are. So for grammatical one and two, we said 10 credit points, that means 300 hours of work. Uh, we assume the semester has uh, 13 weeks. In theory, it's 15 weeks, but maybe in the first week, not that many things are happening. And um, so let's say roughly we have 13 weeks. Um, and uh, if we just count the numbers of hours for um, lectures and uh, tutorials, kind of a bit more than 60% go to the Photogrammetry 1 course and nearly 40% go to the Photogrammetry 2 course. Just to kind of have roughly the ratio how much workload is needed in the first semester and how much workload is needed in the second semester. Then I assume to, you need some time for preparing for the exam. Let's say 60 hours is a rough estimate where you're just sitting there in the end preparing for the exam. That means 300 minus 60 remain, so we have 240 hours remaining. And these 240 hours are now split up on the two semesters. So 62% in the first semester and 38% uh, in the second semester. This leads to something like 
150 hours in this term and 90 hours in the next term on workload that I expect you to work on the photogrammetry one course. So if we divide this now by 13 weeks, um, we end up with something like 11.5 hours per week for, for the summer term and 7 hours per week for the winter term. So, as we said, there is um, the, uh, the lecture and the tutorials, which is, um, let's say, four to five hours in sum. Um, you have to subtract this uh, from, uh, from, from these 11.5 hours here. So you have kind of eight hours remaining, and maybe you take some time, or eight to seven to eight hours remaining, and maybe you spend half an hour in revising the material or preparing for the, um, the next course without actually solving your homework assignments. That means we have six to seven hours left for your homework assignment. That per week, six to seven hours should be invested into homework assignments and then you are roughly at what I'm expected you're investing. Now just to give you some numbers to calibrate with that. Okay? So if you are spending substantially more than these 11 and a half hours or 12 hours per week, um, then it's time to come to me and talk to me and say, this is too much workload. Although, given the experience I'm teaching this course now since um, 2014, um, this is roughly in line what students need and what the expectations are. Um, of course, there can be periods in time where you have some other practicals and are very overworked in a week. Then please let us know. We're happy to shift the homework assignments um, to, a, to a second week if you whatever have some practical courses or some block modules which take a lot of your time. But on average, this should be the numbers you should spend on the course. And again, these, the exam preparation, 60 hours for that, has already been accounted for. So um, a few words about the exam. The exam is always be a written exam, typically um, three hours long at the end of the winter term, so after the Photogrammetry 2 course. Um, in order to be admitted to the exam, so what we in Germany has as Studienleistung, um, you're expected to solve 50% uh, of the homework assignments in Photogrammetry 1 and, again, 50% of the homework assignments in the Photogrammetry 2 course. So 50% each is the minimum requirement to be admitted to the exam. Again, that's something which is doable. It's not completely out of focus and please do the homework assignments yourself because they are there to support you and to foster your learning. So a few words about the tutorial and the homework assignments. Um, so the tutorials are there to support you. So if you say, I don't need the tutorials, you don't have to come. You don't have to dial in. Even in, in, in reality, if we have regular teaching, you don't need to show up if you don't need that. It's an offer to you. I can only recommend to go there because I think it's valuable, it makes sense um, to attend the tutorial, but if you think you don't gain anything from that or you're more effective if you sit down for two hours and prepare the stuff yourself, feel free to do those. There's no, it's not mandatory to attend. Um, the tutorials are, are also there to give you a chance to ask questions and to ask questions to someone else than me as a professor. So it may be easier for students to approach um, one of the PhD students um, and maybe it's easier for you, it feels uh, safer to ask them questions. Please do so, they are there to support you. Ask any questions about the homework assignments or some um, course material, um, Louis as well as Jan are able to answer your questions. Regarding the scheduling um, for the tutorials, please um, check the eCampus uh, site. Uh, there we have the exact tutorials um, when they will take place um, so that you can, and also the information how to dial in, for example, via Zoom, which you can use in a browser and have a video conferencing system, uh, which allows you to even do discussions uh, with very large groups. A few words about the homework assignments. Um, they are again also given out via eCampus and these will be programming exercises, mainly um, using Python as a programming language. So some of you may not have been exposed to Python. I'm actually aware of that. Um, and we are um, handling that by having the first weeks of this course being exclusively there to teach you Python. And uh, Jan as well as Louis will provide you with Python tutorials there are some very good tutorials online and they will also do some online coding together with you and will support you so that this is done as easy as possible. Why Python, not MATLAB? Um, this is just a change that we have done recently, changing, getting rid of MATLAB completely here in all my courses because Python is simply the way to go. There are so much more tools, it's so much more flexible, it's so much more a programming language 
then um, MATLAB is and used to be. Um, I was always somewhat unhappy with MATLAB and this is now a very good point in time to change and allow you to actually get hands-on experience in developing better software um, using Python rather than MATLAB. So all those homework assignments have a fixed submission date. So there's a fixed submission date on the assignment sheet. At that point in time, you need to hand in your submission. Uh, we are typically rather strict with this. I mean, we are ha happy to shift it if the whole class or the whole course has other duties in a certain week. Um, please come to us and ask us. This year, we will be a bit more flexible in the sense that the current remote teaching um, also poses new challenges to you. So there is some more flexibility in there uh, that you can also allow to, to stretch a deadline a little bit. Um, but please try to be on time. Uh, we will grant extensions if you need one, uh, but please don't overdo it. Um, submission ha happens all via eCompass, as we can, as you know it, uh, submit your assignments. Um, the submission will work in groups of two students, so you can team up with one partner and submit your homework assignments um, together, not three, maximum two people. And again, please submit your homework assignments on time. Last but not least, again, plagiarism is an issue and has an issue been in the previous years, and therefore we haven't looked on that or an eye on that since, uh, since a few years already, so please don't copy your homework assignments. Do them yourself, even if they're not perfect. You will get feedback that helps you to improve and understand the concepts better. Just copying homework assignments is not a solution. You will fail to be admitted to the exam as well as the person you have copied from. So it's not only that the person who copied the homework assignment is um, expelled from the course, but also the person who gave their assignments away. Um, so you're failing not yourself, you're failing yourself, your partner and the person you have copied or the persons you have copied from and they will not be allowed to admit it to the exam and basically lose one year of their studies which just doesn't make sense, it's simply not worth doing that. Um, so again, please do the things yourself and don't copy the results from someone else. Um, so uh, there's a general recommendation but this is something that we have a little bit of an eye on because we had some unpleasant experiences in the previous years with respect to plagiarism. And again, um, the next lectures are not technical lectures in photogrammetry for now. Uh, so for the next couple of lectures, um, Jan Weiler and Louis Wiesmann will provide you with an introduction to Python. These are uh, a few tutorial videos, external tutorial videos that you should watch. And then there will be um, using Zoom um, an online coding where you can ask questions and they try to guide you as good as possible from the transition from MATLAB towards Python, also using Jupyter Notebooks, which is super useful as a combination of um, documenting things and, and writing things down uh, combined with code. Um, so that is really a game changer uh, from my point of view in terms of how you can present your results and how to get in touch with tools that we actually do use in research later on. Um, so I hope that works out well um, and you come along with that uh, and I think you will benefit from that in the long run substantially. So with this, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, you can't ask them right now, but feel free to send me an email um, if there's something unclear or something requires clarification. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and see you soon.